Just a few months after the Russian Empire entered World War I, a group of Georgian men abandoned their remote homes high up in the Caucasus Mountains and made the long journey to the capital city. Upon arriving at the governor's house, they expressed the desire to join the war effort, asking simply, where is the war? We hear there's a war. While ordinarily such a scene might appear unremarkable, after all across Europe millions of men were volunteering to defend their homelands, what was unusual was the appearance of these new recruits. Dressed in full chainmail armour, armed with shields and broadswords, and riding on horseback, these strange men from the mountains entered the city like a warband of lost medieval crusader knights, emerging from the mists of history to once again take up arms against the enemy after eight centuries in exile. Yet just who were these ghosts of the past, and how did they come to be? When the Great War began in 1914, the Russian Empire was truly vast, stretching from the Pacific Ocean in the east, to Scandinavia and the Caucasus Mountains in the west. Yet despite being such a formidable size, the Russian Empire was far less developed than its European rivals and allies, with most Russian citizens living in much the same way as they had for hundreds of years. The average person lived and died as little more than medieval serfs, bound to the land they worked, with no hope of escaping the poverty they were born into. And in the more remote areas of the empire, day-to-day -day life was frozen in time, unaffected by the rapid changes and advancements occurring in the outside world. Yet nevertheless, from across this sprawling, multi-ethnic and relatively backward empire, People from all walks of life answered the call to defend their homeland, often woefully ill-equipped for the technologically advanced war that lay ahead. One of the multitude of territories that had been absorbed into Russia's ever-expanding borders was the comparatively tiny nation of Georgia. Georgia had been part of the Russian Empire since 1801, when an ill-fated alliance with Russia against the Persians resulted in her complete annexation by her former ally, reducing the once proud and fiercely independent Georgia to the status of a Russian region. Ultimately, Georgians, along with many of the other people living in the Caucasus region, would find themselves fighting in the wars of their new country, with an estimated 200,000 Georgians thought to have fought in World War I for the Russian army. One of the groups who would serve in this huge force of Georgian warriors were a people known as the Kevsa. The Kevsa are believed to have settled in the eastern part of Georgia in the early Middle Ages, Although considered ethnically Georgian, the Kevsa maintained a distinct culture and way of life that was shaped by the remote environment and unique history. Settling high up in the Caucasus Mountains, the Kevsa were completely cut off from the rest of Georgia for up to nine months of every year due to the thick ice and deep snow that fell every winter forcing them to become self-sufficient and allowing them to remain insulated from the chaos and turbulence of the outside world. This harsh and secluded environment produced hardy warriors who were fiercely independent, their isolation and remoteness affording them a high degree of autonomy, despite loyally serving Georgian kings through the centuries, who often used Kevsa warriors as bodyguards and guardians of the border due to their deeply entrenched martial culture and reputation as exceptional fighters. The men following a strict system of training coupled with constant preparation for war, Submitting only to the Georgian king, the Kevsa elected their own leaders and council of elders. Yet despite staying true to their own traditions and religion, they always answered the call to arms whenever Georgia was attacked by outsiders. Since settling in the region, the Kevsa had been under constant threat from their neighbours, living in fortress villages high up in the mountains as they fought to preserve their own version of Christianity against their largely Muslim enemies, this constant external threat forging their devotion and willingness to defend their way of life, no matter the cost. The Kevsa had frequently clashed with the Turkish neighbours, so when Russia entered a new war against the Ottoman Empire in 1914, the Kevsa were keen to join the fray against their old enemies. 
News of the war's outbreak had taken seven months to reach them in their mountaintop fortress villages. However, upon hearing that fighting had commenced, the Kefsir answered the call to arms as they had done for centuries. They equipped themselves and immediately headed for the Georgian capital. However, it would be the traditional armaments that would first cause onlookers to compare them to medieval crusader knights. The Kefsir arrived at the governor's house wearing medieval-style chainmail armor. Each piece comprised of over 20,000 iron links, forming a highly protective but flexible layer that is said to have fit the body like a shirt. Mesh gauntlets and greaves covered the forearms and shins, while a chain helmet protected the head, leaving only the knees and thighs vulnerable. Their entire suit of armor said to have weighed over 30 pounds. At their sides were long, dual-edged broadswords and small, circular leather shields which resembled bucklers. Both the weapons and armor were decorated with the iconic red crosses of the Crusades, the gear engraved with the words, Holy Mary, Mother of God one of the mottos used by the original Crusaders. When the Kefsir entered the Georgian capital in 1915, it's not surprising that many would have mistaken them for lost medieval knights, since they so closely resembled the traditional stereotype of a Crusader. But there was more to the link between the Kefsir and the Crusaders of the past than merely their appearance. According to some legends, a small force of crusaders found themselves shipwrecked on the shores of Turkey while sailing for the Holy Land. With their path forward blocked by a much larger Saracen army that was rapidly bearing down on them, and with the long retreat home through hostile territory sure to result in their destruction, the lost crusaders were left with no other choice than to flee for their lives north into the Caucasus Mountains, eventually finding sanctuary in the most remote and rugged region of Georgia. Unable to return home, these forgotten crusaders settled down and built new lives, mixing with locals, finding wives, and having children, their descendants eventually becoming the Kevsir. Other accounts suggest that wounded Crusader knights may have been sent to Georgia for treatment and recuperation and never returned home, or that when the Christian kingdom of Jerusalem fell to the Muslims, Crusader refugees fled north and found safety in the inaccessible mountains of Georgia, their traditions and customs faithfully preserved by their progeny. In addition to these legends, the Russian serviceman and ethnographer Arnold Zissiman spent 25 years studying the people of the Caucasus Mountains and firmly believed that the Kevsir were in fact descendants of the last European Crusaders, noting the remarkable resemblance their culture, society, and religion shared with that of the Crusaders, while the American adventurer Richard Halliburton proposed a similar hypothesis in his 1935 book titled Seven League Boots, pointing out that the Kevsir armor was French in style and their dialect contained several German words. While no convincing evidence exists to validate these stories, legitimate historical manuscripts prove that 100 Frankish crusaders fought in the Georgian army at the Battle of Didgori, and some crusaders definitely did pass through Georgia following the fall of the Holy Land. It's certainly possible that Lost Crusaders could have ended up settling high up in the mountains of modern-day Georgia, their existence forgotten by history until their descendants arrived in the Georgian capital to join the Great War centuries later. Though the Kevsir would ultimately see action in the First World War, they're unlikely to have gone into battle wearing their chainmail armor and wielding broadswords. These medieval armaments considered more ceremonial than practical, worn only on special occasions at duels and tournaments, where the old martial traditions were kept alive and handed down from father to son. However, other similarly armored warriors would make appearances on the battlefields of the Great War. Brewster body armor was developed to protect soldiers from the potent killing capabilities of modern machine guns and was used in action on several occasions. Weighing 40 pounds, the armor consisted of a breastplate and helmet which could withstand limited gunfire, and most of the armies involved in the First World War would develop their own versions of body armor. However, the armor was clumsy, heavy, and expensive, and with millions of soldiers engaged in battle all over the continent, Utilizing body armor on a large scale was simply not practical. 
even though the British Army estimated that over three quarters of battle injuries could have been prevented had the soldiers been issued adequate body armour. No further details exist to suggest what the ultimate fate of the Kevsa might be, and whether or not they survived the war. However, when the Tsarist government of Russia fell following the Bolshevik Revolution, collectivization would have been imposed on all areas of the Soviet Union, no matter how remote. The Kevsa way of life that had survived and remained untouched for so many centuries, eventually succumbing to the turbulence and upheaval of the 20th century. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and I'll see you again soon.